Hi guys, Dr. Sharma here. So um, in today's video, I really wanted to discuss something which comes up often uh, with patients and clients around the world. Um, not just patients who come to our clinic in Alberta, Canada, uh, but actually, you know, a lot of patients who contact us from other parts of the world who want some information. So we're gonna be talking about FUE techniques, the so follicular unit excision techniques. And this is the procedure where the grafts are taken one by one using a motorized punch, um, which is essentially a small blade that rotates. Now, a very, very long time ago, there was this very large debate within the hair transplant community about which technique is better. Is it FUE or is it FUT, where we make the linear excision from ear to ear? I think, you know, uh, as we say in England, there's lots of different ways to skin the cat. Ultimately, it depends upon how you perform the procedure, how you plan it. Um, every case is uh, different and every individual must be assessed upon their own merits. Uh, but I think um, it's evident, without a doubt, that the FUE technique is ga gathering popularity because a lot of men do not wish to have a linear excision in the back of the scalp. Um, and, and I personally love doing the FUT technique. I really, really do. I'm very good at it. I love, um, you know, making a lovely linear excision. I love stitching it. I love making, um, you know, uh, the results look as best as I can by ensuring the scar is minimal. But um, from what I found in my own practice is a lot of men just don't want to um, undergo the linear cut anymore. They would wish to go for the FUE technique. So with that being said, um, often it's how can we ensure that the best method is used to uh, provide the best grafts, the best quality of grafts and the best looking hair. And what are the limitations with the FUE, FUE technique to allow this, and perform this? So if we go back to a history lesson, um, FUE came from Japan. Um, and initially, um, I think it was early as back in the 1950s, um, they were actually using very, very large punch sizes, sometimes, you know, as large as 0.8 of a centimeter, 0.7 of a centimeter. So it was literally referred to as hair plugs. And obviously this is how the technique initially gathered pace. Uh, back then the results um, were anything far from perfect. And unfortunately, it did give this appearance of being quite pluggy, looking like a doll's hair. And over time, um, the techniques and the technology and our understanding has evolved. Um, we understand that um, to really achieve uh, as near natural hair as we can get, we need to make sure that the roots are not damaged. Um, the grafts are treated with the utmost care and um, the entire microstructure is not damaged. Um, and also trying to take as much fat as we can as well, because the more padding the individual follicle has, the better growth it's going to have. So with the FUE technique, um, there was initially some skepticism about how good of a job can you do if you can't see the graft. Um, initially, um, a lot of the technique was done manually using a manual um, punch. Um, and then obviously as time has progressed, we've gone onto the motorized technology. Um, initially, when I started my practice back in London, the UK, uh, we were using um, a motorized punch, very, very high speeds, and it was simply ex excising the uh, skin and excising all the way to the bottom, um, into the dermis, into some of the fat layer, and then each individual follicle was, po was pulled one by one. It is a procedure where a lot of hand-eye coordination comes into play because anyone can do this technique, you know, um, and you may get a lot of it, a lot of transactions because you can't see. It's all experience and hand-eye coordination. Um, and I did very, very well. But even with that, I always wanted to go to the next edge. And I was always very curious about, well, if we're going in with a very fast rotating blade, um, that trauma, that torque, that rotational force, 
can we be damaging the follicles even without knowing about it? Um, is that microtrauma going to affect results? So there's a large variety of FUE technology on the market as well. Um, they, there are, there are ro rotating um, blades, there are oscillating blades, um, there are vibrational blades. Um, personally, what I found using my experience is every person's skin, tissue, elasticity, um, excess angle is different. Um, so it really varies from case to case. But one thing I have found that's a general rule is the less trauma you can uh, perform around the area when you're going in, the less um, contact with the hair follicle you can provide, the better the results are going to be. So we, then, we <clears throat> very recently invested in a lovely piece of technology from Europe um, from a world-renowned hair transplant surgeon called Dr. Devroy, who's one of my idols. Um, and he developed a technology called the Tornado Punch. And ultimately what this device allows is it's a very low speed rotational blade, excises the skin, and the majority of the cutting to free the follicle is done using vibrations. Um, and the reason that this is really, really cool, what I found, is that we're not really having much contact with the actual hair follicle. Um, the patient often experiences like their scalp's being vibrated. Um, and this is actually freeing up the tissue using vibration rather than cutting or talk. And one thing I found um, after introducing this practice recently is there are some downsides to that it's a longer procedure, but we're not here for you know, fast results, we're here for good results. But secondly, the quality of the um, hair follicles is much better. And what I've also found is we're able to get um, a reduced diameter of each, each individual hair follicle, but still getting a bit of fat as well, which I haven't really found with some of the older technologies. So that's one way that we're keeping up. Uh, to date with technology, with progress, to ensure that, you know, if we're operating to a 95% um, level of excellency, we want to try and squeeze that edge to get to 90, 96, 97, and that's the way you always want to be better. Um, so I hope this video helps, um, and I certainly hope it helps um, you to explore different devices out there. Do try to understand the importance of torque, rotational speed, um, you know, if you have more curly hair, that's gonna certainly slow the procedure down even more um, because every single hair follicle as it exits the epidermis is going to be at a different angle. So you simply can't um, dissect an entire row of hair follicles using the same angle. Um, and that's where, you know, it's very important to make sure that you find a quality provider rather than somebody who's just doing, you know, bulk procedures. Um, because in the end of the day, it's your hair and you're living with it the rest of, the rest of your life. Um, but yeah, I hope this helps. Um, and uh, any questions, just leave them in the link below. Thanks very much.